Good morning, Crossroad Baptist Church. Uh, we're glad that you're a part of our Wednesday morning Bible study this morning. We've been having some difficulty getting live online this morning, but Mitch and Justin have come to the rescue and uh, helping us out, and I'm thankful for that. Uh, but good to have you back uh, this morning for our Bible study. Well, a good day in the Lord is uh, every day, especially today. I'm looking forward to Sherry coming up from Carnesville. She's on her way up now, and uh, she's going to join uh, Renee, uh, our former pastor's wife, and, and uh, together we're going to have some lunch and some good fellowship. And I'm looking forward to our transition team meeting tonight. This is really where we're stepping up to the plate and ready to bat and go to work. And uh, I think the uh, movement of the transition team will officially begin tonight after training them for three weeks and getting them well prepared. And I'm uh, looking forward to our time with the transition team uh, tonight. Well, I think, you know, this Sunday, we're uh, having just one service in the Christian Life Center in the gymnasium. The last uh, three weeks, we've uh, had two separate services, but uh, we feel like the room is large enough in the gymnasium to accommodate our crowd. And, uh, and so we'll gather this Sunday at nine o'clock. The following Sunday, uh, we're making plans to have our Sunday school classes back in session. There's a number of transitions that are going to have to take place. We'll give you that information in a letter this week. Uh, uh, Mitch will help us with that. And John Knipe, our Sunday school superintendent, uh, they're organizing this for us. So uh, we can accommodate everyone safely and uh, be able to have some fellowship and Bible study together. That schedule will be 9 o'clock worship in the morning. And, of course, uh, in the sanctuary, we'll have our live video uh, uh, in the sanctuary for those that prefer wearing masks only. And then at 1015, our Sunday school will assemble beginning on July the 5th. So just keep that in mind, if you will. Later in July, uh, we're planning to do some Wednesday night activities here um, the, with the RAs and the GAs and the youth. And uh, I plan to have an adult Bible study. We'll not have meals on Wednesday night, but, but uh, we're going to open that up in about a month away. Uh, and so just stay posted. I appreciate your patience. Uh, I know this is a difficult time for all of our churches. And uh, we just have to adjust the best way we can to carry on do ministry. All righty. Let's go this morning to the book of Isaiah, chapter number 43. Isaiah 43 is our Bible study this morning. And uh, you may want to get your pen out. I often say that when we have Bible study together or even when I'm preaching. And uh, it's kind of like reading through a book. Uh, when I buy a book and want to go through the first time, I'll take my pen and, un and score, underscore some things and because I like to go back and look at the highlights of those things that I've noted in my reading. And uh, I know in our Bibles, if uh, when you take notes and, and uh, uh, personal notes, uh, there's times you can go through your Bible and maybe through a way of a Bible study and uh, remind yourself of some notes that have been taken from previous times. So maybe this will help you if you'd like to grab a pen. Uh, we'll go through the chapter number 43 this morning and to outline some things for you in just a moment. Let me say this by way of introduction. Uh, Isaiah 43 through 45, those three chapters are rich. And if you're looking for an opportunity to be blessed of the Lord, just meditate and nurture yourself on the goodness of God in Isaiah chapter 43 uh, through 45. Matter of fact, you go a few more chapters to Isaiah chapter 53, that great uh, messianic prophecy of Jesus our Lord and uh, you remember that passage where he was wounded for our transgressions and so forth and it introduces Jesus in Isaiah chapter 53 but you know what here in Isaiah 43 uh, we're getting an introduction of God himself at least these uh, Israelites are and God is speaking here in Isaiah chapter 43 and he introduces himself to us by telling us who he is, and then explaining to us what he does. And then it unfolds to us our responsibility, or better yet, what we're supposed to do in the light of who he is and what he does. So let's take our Bibles in Isaiah 43 and just uh, see if we can outline some things. Number one, who is the Lord? Who is this Lord? Look in verse number one. But now says the Lord. And if you'll see in your Bible, 
that word Lord has all capital letters. Have you ever noticed that? Capital L, capital O, capital R, and capital D. And it's not always spelled that way in the Old Testament. Sometimes you'll see it as capital L with lowercase O-R-D. And there is a distinction in the Hebrew writings of that particular name. Well, the word Lord, capital L, capital O, capital R, and capital D, is descriptive of what the Israelites knew as Jehovah, God, that covenant name that God made with Israel or Yahweh in the Old Testament. But in this particular chapter, that rendering of Jehovah is found numbers of places, and you can see it in verse number 3, verse number 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 25. Let me say that again. Verse 3, 10, 11, 12, 14, 15, 16, and 25. That's the covenant name for Israel. Now, you'll also find uh, capital L-O-R-D, the word Adonai. And that's that Hebrew equi equivalent of what uh, Jesus is or uh, of that Christian word used for Christ. It means one who's over us. It means master. The first rendering you see that is in Genesis chapter 18, verse number 12, when uh, Sarah understood about Abraham being over her. She she called him his Lord. And you go about interesting. You go down to verse number thirteen, and uh, you'll see that those capital letters of the Lord Jehovah that's referred there. But he calls himself the Lord. And then there's another in interesting thing about how uh, the Lord recognizes and gives to us His recognition. He says in verse number three, "I am the Lord, thy God." What a reminder! Uh, that's a sweet name to think about our Lord. He's God. He's God of gods. Uh, he's a, it, it, we, we designate that name quite often when we speak to him and speak of him. We talk about God. But not only is God, he's your God, it says in verse number three. He's thy God. In verse number three, he's the Holy One of Israel. Also, in verse number 15, he says, he's your Holy One. And then he's the Savior in verse number 3 and verse number 11. He's your Savior. Who is the Lord? Something else. Verse number 14, he's Redeemer. He's your Redeemer. And so the Lord introduces in Isaiah chapter 43 who he is. He's Lord. He's God. He's the Holy One. He's the Savior. And he's the Redeemer. We could take all day and just enjoy and talk and rejoice about those glorious names of our God. But then it unfolds to us in chapter 43, not only who he is, but what he does, or better yet, what he did with Israel. Back in verse number one, he says, I'm the Lord. First of all, he said, I created you. Thy creator. Good cross reference is Genesis chapter one, verse 26 to 27, when man was formed from the dust of the ground, created in the image of God, uh, and God breathed in his nostrils the breath of life, man became a living soul. Uh, he's the Lord that created us. That's the first thing he says concerning his work. And then he formed us in verse number one. He fashioned us. He designed us. We're all designed uh uh, specifically in different ways and fashions. And uh, no one has been formed and fashioned the same way with different personalities and different gifts about us. But it's God, verse number one. What did he do? He created us and he formed us. Verse one, he's redeemed us. Verse one, he's called us by our names. Verse number four, he's loved us. He gives to us. Verse 5, he's with us. Verse number 10, he's chosen us. Isn't that interesting? It's wonderful. Verse 12, this is what he does. This is what he did. He saved us and showed us. Uh, he makes a way for us. Verse number 16. Verse 25, the last thing I see in this chapter as to what he does for us 
is that he blots out our transgressions. And chapter 43, let's remind ourselves, he shows us who he is. And then secondly, he gives to us in this passage what he does for us. That's a blessing. Somebody ever asks you, what has the Lord done for you? Man, well, let me show you. I'll take you to chapter 43 of Isaiah and just go right down that list of all the things God does for us. Well, see, he's created me, and he's, he's formed me. And he's redeemed me, and he's called me. He's loved me, and he gives to me. He's always with me. He's chosen me. He's saved me. Uh, he, he makes a way for me, and he blots out all my transgressions, and my, 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 what the Lord does for us. And then lastly this morning, let me just give you this thought this morning. Not only does it give to us in Isaiah 43 who the Lord is, and number two, what he does for us, but then it unfolds to us, what am I supposed to do? When God speaks to me, verse number one, the Lord's speaking. Here's what the Lord is saying. Look at that. Thus says the Lord, when God speaks to me and tells me who he is and what he does, then what is my responsibility back to the Lord or with the Lord? What's my relation with him? when I discover who he is and what he does. The first thing he says to us is verse number five. He says, don't be fearful. Fear not, for I'm with thee. Fear not, for I'm with thee. I wonder how many days of the week you can use that thought right there, that verse right there, and claim it. To think that we don't have to have fear as believers in Jesus, followers of God, that God who's redeemed us, that God who loves us, that God who's called us, that God who's created us and formed us and chosen us. We don't have to have any fear. We don't want to live our lives like that and to not be fearful. So he says, fear not, for I am with thee. And then he says in verse number eight and nine, another responsibility. He says, gather the people, bring forth the blind people that have eyes, bring forth the Deaf people that have ears. Let all the nations be gathered together. Let them all be assembled. Uh, who among you can declare this and show us these former things? So God gives us a responsibility. The first thing he says, now, when you walk with me and serve me, I don't want you to fear me. But I want you to obey me. And first thing I want you to do is bring the people, gather the people. Now, it doesn't take long when you go into this passage and many other places in Scripture to see why God asked of us to go bring people and gather the people. We find that lesson in evangelism, winning people to Christ. We, we gather them together to hear the message or a group together, or maybe just one individual together. You go to that person and put them in a conversation about the Lord. So they're being gathered to enter into a, a, a revelation of the Lord as to who he is and, and what he does. By the way, there's enough gospel in Isaiah 43 to save the whole world. To think about our Lord, who he is, and what he's done. He's got the power to redeem us and bring us in a right standing with him. But our responsibility is go bring the people and speak of the Lord concerning this thing of the past that I brought to your attention. In verse 10, it uses the word witness. God says, you are my witnesses, says the Lord. You are my witnesses. I want to ask you a question. Can you say that today? That you are a witness of the Lord. You speak firsthand about who God is and what God has done and what he's doing. Do you speak that word? Are you gathering people together to be a witness of who this great God is. He said, you are my witnesses. That's what we're supposed to do. We're supposed to be, be a witness. Also in verse number 10, we're supposed to serve the Lord. It says, you are my servant whom I have chosen. Our responsibility is to serve the Lord. And then verse number 18, this is uh, more on the mindset that we would have or the emotion side that we have he said, I want you to forget the past. 
Remember not the former things, and don't be considering the things of old. Now, there's a lot of application in that verse, and there's a good representation of what God is telling these children of Israel. Where they had been, where they had wandered, now God has introduced us to who he is and what he wants to do for them. A matter of fact, it says, as you forget the past, he said, verse 19, and I like this. Man, I have put stars on verse number 19. You might want to do the same. It says, behold, I will show you and do for you a new thing, and it will come forth. He said, don't remember and, and, and stay in the past, but consider the things that are going to become new to you that I'm going to bring forth, and you will know it. And uh, what a wonderful testimony when we think about uh, that uh, responsibility we have to forget the past and look forward to the new things. And then down in verse number 22, he introduced to us that, that uh, we're supposed to call upon the Lord. Verse number 23 and 24, we're supposed to sacrifice and give unto the Lord. And if that's not enough, in closing, he says in verse number 26, we're just supposed to remember the Lord. Put me in remembrance. To think about who the Lord is in chapter 43 and what the Lord is doing and what he's done. It brings to me my responsibility. What am I supposed to do when I recognize who God is and what he's up to and what he's doing? And so he says, don't fear me. Gather people together. Be a witness about me. Serve me. Believe me, verse number 10. Forget the past and recognize the new things that I'm going to bring forth and accept that and to be a sacrifice and giving offerings to me, verse 23 and 24, and don't ever forget me and remember me. I'm tiptoeing down to the next chapter in closing. I like verse number three, and I think it's kind of a, a, a thing to rejoice in the great God that he wants to do for us, each and every one. If you're in God's family, and you're part of his own. You know what he says? Verse number three, Isaiah 44. He says, I'll pour water upon him who is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon thy seed and my blessing to everyone in your family, to all of your offspring. And so the first words of Isaiah 43 says for us, the Lord is speaking, and when the Lord speaks, we ought to listen and say yes, Lord, to whatever he has to say. That old song says it like this. Hear the blessed Savior sweetly calling, who will go and work for me today? Who will bring the lost and the dying? Who will point them to the narrow way? Speak, my Lord, speak, my Lord. Speak, and I'll be quick to answer thee. Speak, my Lord, speak, my Lord. Speak, and I will answer, Lord, send me. Can you agree with me this morning? The Lord's still speaking. And man, I want to hear what the Lord has to say. And Isaiah 43, 44, and 45 is just as much alive today as it was in the Old Testament. Accept it, believe it, and do it. it is my prayer for all the blessed people of Crossroad Baptist Church today. In Jesus' name, amen.